Now, I think the name Shyamalan has come to polarize audiences almost immediately. Those that see the name and can't wait for something twisty, and those who see the name and have been burned more often than not by a ridiculous or simplified twist. No matter how you feel, though, about M. Night, his daughter Ishana has taken the reins of The Watchers and makes her feature directorial debut. So does she continue in her father's footsteps, or will she forge her own path? A young artist gets stranded in an extensive forest in Western Ireland, where, after finding shelter, she becomes trapped alongside three strangers, stalked by mysterious creatures each night. So Dakota Fanning plays Mina, a young woman who's running an errand for work when she gets stranded in this crazy huge forest. She immediately experiences odd things, and as the sun sets, she finds shelter in this concrete and glass structure that's just plopped right in the middle of the trees. Now, the inhabitants bolt the door, and then they must stand in front of this mirrored wall while the watchers come and observe. Now, the lore for this is fantastic. I mean, the movie is based on a book of the same name by A.M. Shine, with Ashana Shyamalan writing the screenplay. Now, one thing this does have going for it is atmosphere. There is a shadowy, foreboding aura cast across the seemingly never-ending forest. There's barely any sunlight that penetrates to the forest floor. And the occupants of the coop, as they call it, they must scavenge for all of their supplies. So there's an eerie tone that's helped along just because of the caginess of our characters. Dakota Fanning is the one we know most about, so as she learns about the other players, that's when we do as well. Georgina Campbell is one of the four, and she's caring and compassionate, but also melancholy and nervous. Oliver Finnegan is a young man who's skittish, maybe a bit unhinged, too. He's been there quite a long time, and the isolation, along with the nightly stress of the Watchers, it has begun to unravel him just a bit. And then we have Olwen Fiore. She is Madeline, an older woman who's been in the structure the longest. Now, she's able to complete a little of the lore for us, but not without an air of dread or just maybe some relinquished hope. She's a bit of a mother figure to the rest of them, but she also doesn't have much motivation to even look for a way out. But because Mina absolutely doesn't want to spend time there, they have conflicting views and then values on how to proceed. Now, there's a lot of quietness to this, where we watch the characters solemnly sit or lay in silence during the night. Sometimes they're sleeping, other times they're just staring off into the void, but it casts a lonely and surrendered tone across the story. And I love the mounting hopelessness. It feels real and even earned, even though the film doesn't spend an exorbitant amount of time dwelling on watching these characters just sit around. And it's kind of funny with this. I mean, who actually are the Watchers? There's obviously something outside of the coop that makes noise in the dark, and they certainly want to come and watch, but then we are doing the exact same thing. So are we also the villains? Or at least a threat? <laughs> but outside of that, the film, it's brisk and efficient with its time. I was surprised that it was only an hour and 42 minutes, I and mean, it felt shorter than that. But that's not to say that the storytelling was sped along or skimped on. We don't know exactly how much time has passed since Mina has arrived, but we get the sense it's been either several days, if not even several weeks. But thankfully, we're not bored into submission by having to watch sequence after sequence of monotonous inaction just endlessly. And when we do see the group sitting around at night, an informing action or visual is typically also present. Even when it seems like an element isn't related, there is a brilliant parallel that's in place that involves the Watchers and Mina. Now, for as much as I was enjoying the mystery of what was going on and the tiny insights that we get into the lore, there are some exposition dumps that spell it out just a little too plainly for my tastes. I mean, I don't mind the clues that we get, but then when a character has to relay the information again, it begins to feel a bit insulting. Like we as the audience were not able to pick up on the obvious information that the story was laying down. There's also a stutter in the narrative as we move towards the final act. Now, I wouldn't call it a false ending, but when it feels as if the story is wrapping up, there is a bit more to tell. And I can see how that might make some feel the movie goes on just longer than it needed to. But the film does find a satisfying conclusion, even if the exposition dumps are excessive. Now, something else that was more of a personal beef with the film is what we're shown of the Watchers. Kind of like in the first Omen, where we are shown certain imagery, I would much rather see nothing or, at most, shadowy elements rather than something in detail, because my imagination is typically much worse and freaky than what's created visually. 
And eventually, we are shown a lot of the Watchers. I mean, some of it's still shrouded in darkness or quick camera movements, but we do see more than I would prefer. You may not mind it at all. But I think something that we will completely agree on is the camera work that this employs, especially where the characters are inside the coop at night. Now, because one wall is a giant mirror and the characters often stand in front of it facing outwards, the camera will then travel around the room to capture reactions in their reflections. But we never see the camera. I mean, it's really impressive as a final product, regardless how it's achieved. It reminded me of several scenes within the Suspiria remake. All those mirrored walls, they were not able to catch a glimpse of the film crew, which then immerses us into the action and the dread of those scenes. And I think if you walk into this movie expecting some sort of grand twist, simply because the Shyamalan name is attached, you're going to be disappointed. There are some surprises, which I think is expected for any mysterious thriller, but there's not the grand reveal like in The Sixth Sense. This tells a tense and efficient story that's steeped in curious lore, and it does maintain a mild level of suspense and unease all the way through. It's not a scary movie, there aren't any jump scares, and for as ungrounded as the narrative may seem, it's actually quite grounded for this type of genre. Now, while I had fun with this and it held my interest the entire time, especially as we got closer to some of the plot reveals, it's not something that I see myself going back to very often. I guessed correctly at a few of the surprises, but I wasn't necessarily disappointed. Now, one area this film does struggle in is that there are a lot of opportunities within the storytelling to dive further into our characters, not into their background, but to showcase the deteriorating mental state that they currently experience due to the ongoing stress and anguish of these noisy and freaky visitors each night. I mean, the small bit of unraveling that we do see makes sense, but it'd be even more satisfying to watch characters spiral. Could they recover? Eh, probably, but they don't necessarily need to because it could then create a whole new level of danger for all of the other occupants. I'm impressed with the atmosphere and mood Ashana Shyamalan creates. She had cut her teeth directing several episodes of Apple's Servant series, which also features a dark and uneasy tone. So overall, The Watchers uses the cold and sinister look of the Irish forest to build a story rich in lore, but low on thrills. Excellent camera work within the character's enclosure produces an immersive experience, placing the audience close enough to the cast to feel their stress while capturing their helplessness and despondent expressions as they face the unseen outdoors. The characters can be compelling, but would be even more impactful if shown how the overwhelming isolation and fear take their toll. The movie also suffers a bit from the choice to show a lot of the antagonists, removing the dread that comes from the unknown. And while some explanation of the backstory is helpful in understanding the larger narrative, the multiple exposition dumps reduce what had been established by removing the need for critical thinking in order to bring the dots so close together that you don't even need to watch the first two-thirds of the film to grasp the meaning. This is a mostly enjoyable first feature for Ishana Mashamalan. Now here's hoping that she strays from her father's storytelling tendencies and carves her own unique path. There is no sex or nudity, some profanity, and some violence. I give The Watchers three out of five couches. So what's a great thriller you've seen lately? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.